All right, Bulldogs, we've got a couple things to talk about today. Uh, the videos will probably come out in the next couple of days. But the one thing I really want to talk about and share with you is expectations, right? You shouldn't have expectations. And I want to define for you what expectations are, uh, why expectations are not good, uh, what you should replace them with, which is standards, and how you should use trust instead of expectation. So first of all, let's let's define what expectations are. Expectations are simply you having some kind of attachment to a particular way that reality is constructed or transforms or unfolds. What does that mean? It's as simple as this. It means that you want things to be the way that you want them to be and you have an attachment to them being that way. It is an attachment to an outcome. It is an attachment to something that exists, that it sustains the way that it is, it is attachment, all right? And it's destructive to you. Let me tell you why it's destructive to you. The reason why is because when you have an external attachment, again, we're, we're looking at this from a very stoic lens of stoic philosophy, because this is really a life philosophy that is gonna change your life. I'm starting a new stoic channel where I'm gonna be going over Seneca's letters to Lucilius and doing commentary on that. I've got a few videos recorded. I haven't published them yet, but it's gonna be daily. I just wanna make sure I get enough of a cue. Anyway, when we're, when we're talking about stoicism, the goal of stoicism is inner peace or tranquility. All right. And the way that we achieve that is by disconnecting the external from the internal. What we're saying is that we do not want to be attached to things which are outside of our control as much as possible. Now, we're humans. It's not going to be perfectly possible, but we want to achieve that state as much as possible. And that allows us to experience inner peace or joy. It allows us to be content. It allows us to not be riveted and rocked by the waves of fate, all right? So we're insulating ourselves from that. This might sound like a familiar concept because if you study Eastern religions and Eastern philosophy, you will find the same idea of non-attachment. You'll find this in, in Buddhism, right? Buddha was supposed to be the guy who figured this out first and it was like, oh, wow, you know, attachment creates suffering. Desire creates suffering. When we remove desire, when we remove attachment, we remove ourselves from suffering, all right? So the, the point is, is that expectations, and I've done some talks on this where, where I've said that if you want to get rid of anger, all you have to do is get rid of expectations. Now, that, that's that's not actually the full truth. The full truth is that if you want to get rid of all negative emotions, every negative emotion that you experience in life, this the formula is to get rid of expectations. Okay. So now you might not realize that you have expectations on a lot of things. You have expectations on just about everything in your life. And that's why you're unhappy. That's why you're angry. That's why you're disappointed. That's why you're sad. That's why you're jealous. That's why you're envious. That's where all of these negative emotions spring from. All right. So what is an expectation? Well, let's start with a unreasonable expectation. All right. And what you'll find is that they're all unreasonable. But let's say that you have an expectation that you're going to go for a run today and the weather should be sunny. It should not be raining. All right, now let's say that it is raining. Wow, what's what's going to happen there? Well, you have an attachment to a specific uh, conditions of reality, and now that 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 uh, those conditions of reality are not being met, that expectation is not going to be met. So you're going to react in disappointment, anger, sadness, frustration, whatever it is, victim mindset. It, you're going to start to spiral into that because that expectation is not met. Now. What I recommend that you do is instead of having expectations is to have standards. So expectations are burdens you put on other people. This is in relation to other people, but standards are things that you have for yourself. So, you know, I, I was coaching a guy once and, and he said, well, you know, shouldn't I have an expectation that my girlfriend isn't going to cheat on me? And I said, absolutely not. That's crazy. He was like, what What are you talking about? I don't, I don't buy this, John. This is ridiculous. I was following you up until then, but now you're taking it to the extreme. And I said, really, am I? Because here's the thing. Can you realistically expect that she is not going to cheat on you? Can you control that? No. Okay, so is it reasonable to have an expectation on something that you can't control? Is she human? Could she get brain damage? Could a, a multitude of things happen which cause her to behave in this way that's outside of your control? Yeah. Could you cheat on her and then she uh, then cheats on you because you cheated on her? Not that that's right, but you see what I'm saying is that when you have an expectation on someone, it's a burden on them and it's absolutely ridiculous because anything that is not in your direct control, which there's only two things that are in your direct control, which is your thoughts, right? How you interpret things and your actions. But anything aside from that, it is ridiculous to have an expectation on. So he said, well, then, you know what? I'm not just, I'm just not supposed to trust her. I'm not supposed to have a relationship with, with my girlfriend. I, I, maybe I shouldn't date women. 
No, that's not what I'm saying at all. I'm saying that you don't need to have an expectation. If you have an expectation and she break and she cheats on you, what's going to happen? Your life is going to be destroyed. Your world is going to be destroyed because you've built your foundation. You've created attachment to a particular set of outcomes, a particular configuration of reality, which you're holding on to. Okay. Now, if instead of having an expectation, you replace it with a standard, right? And remember, an expectation is a burden you put on someone else. They have to behave this way. If they don't do this thing, if they don't do everything that you're wanting them to do, then you're going to be upset, all right? It's a burden you're putting on someone else. It's an expectation. It's an obligation that you're creating for someone unilaterally, all right? But instead, if you replace it with a standard and you have a standard that says, hey, my girlfriend can do whatever she wants. It, it's fine. However, I have a standard. If she cheats on me, I won't be with her. You could have a standard. If she goes out to nightclubs with friends, then you, you're not going to date a girl like that. They, whatever standard that you want, you can choose. The, the beauty of this is, is that you can choose whatever standard that you want, and it's in your control, whereas an expectation isn't. If you have expectations on a person that they're going to behave a certain way, act a certain way, treat you a certain way, love you a certain way, that's a formula for disaster. It's a recipe for disaster. You are going to fight, face disappointment, anger, frustration, and you're going to experience what happens when you are attached to something and you lose that thing, which is an identity crisis. It is not going to be pretty. But instead, if you have standards, all right, and you can make those standards known, I think that's a great thing. It's very similar to boundaries, all right? I mean, they're, they're really, you could really use this interchangeably. Then... Even if she does cheat on you, let's say that you have a standard. This is, I, I, I'm not going to be with a, a woman who cheats on me. Well, she has free reign to do that. If she, if, she want, if she makes that choice, again, you're not putting the expectation on her, so there's no pressure on her to not do it, aside from the standard that you have that you're going to not be with her. So she's, by free will, making her choice. Okay, And if she chooses that she's going to cheat on you, well, I mean, it's going to hurt. Let's be honest. It's going to hurt. It's going to feel bad. All right. However, you will live. You will move on. It's not going to be the reality ripping experience of if you have an attachment to that outcome and have an expectation. You're going to you're going to say, OK, well, my standard is that I'm not going to be with someone who cheats on me, in which case you're probably going to dump her. And that's fine. But you can do that without going through all of the negative emotions that an expectation would evoke. Now, it doesn't mean that you're not going to feel sad or be disappointed, but it's going to be a lot less and you're going to recover a lot sooner because you're not tying everything in your life to that thing. And and we go through life and we have so many expectations, right? I, again, I, I did a video on this, but I'll, I'll just mention it briefly, is that if you have anger problems, all you have to do, the, the solution to anger is very, very simple. All you have to do is you have to look for in that moment when you feel angry, say, what is the expectation that I have that is not being met right now? And then you have to explore a little bit further and say, now, why is that expectation ridiculous? Because they all are, because the only expectation that's not ridiculous is expectations that you have on yourself, which are really standards, okay? And then you have to say, do I really want to continue to hold on to this expectation or can I let it go? And in the minute that you let go of that expectation, the anger will dissipate. It will pass through. It's not that you're never going to feel anger, but over time, as you have less attachment and you have less expectations and you're letting go of the expectations that are in your life, less things are going to be able to evoke you to wrath, okay? Because less things are going to be able to disturb your inner peace. And that is the goal of stoicism. That is what we're trying to do is we're trying to cut all the ties, all the attachments and, and get rid of the expectations. Now, let's let's throw, throw <laughs> trust into the mix here. All right, this is a new one for me because I was just talking about this last night and I realized trust is actually a part of this. So instead of having, because someone might say, well, you know, it, it doesn't make any sense. If I can't expect my girlfriend or my wife to not cheat on me, if I can't expect these certain things from people, then then I, maybe I, sh I just shouldn't be in a relationship with people. I shouldn't trust anyone. And that is not accurate, okay? What it means is that you have to trust people. It means that you should trust people. Trusting someone means that you are taking the risk, that you're weighing things out and you're saying that it is worth the risk to you, all right? So let's say that you date a girl, right? And you, you're, you have a girlfriend or you know, whatever, all right? You don't have the expectation she's not going to cheat on you, but you trust it, you trust her enough to know that she's not going to do it. Now, you don't have perfect knowledge of this. Trust is, is based on faith, right? Every time you go into a restaurant and you eat food, 
guess what you're doing? You're trusting that someone didn't poison that food. It's very easy for the, the, the cook, the chef in the back to poison the food. Now, why would they do it? I don't know. Maybe they're a sick psycho. But you trust that your food is not poison when you eat it. That's a lot of trust. When you get on an airplane, you trust that the pilot isn't having a bad day and isn't suicidal. You trust those things. I probably shouldn't have said that word in this YouTube video, but you trust those things, right? So th those require trust, but you know that there is a risk involved in those things, but you have a high degree of trust. You're, you're like, it's really unlikely that someone's going to poison my food in a restaurant. It could happen but you have to trust it. You're not seeing it. If you have an expectation of it, if you have to see, then you have to see every step through. If you have an expectation on your girlfriend, you have to watch her all the time to make sure that she's fulfilling that expectation, right? And especially when it comes to expectations on how she, treat, she should treat you, then you have to monitor this all the time. You're going to be stressed out. You're like, oh, okay, I have to control everyone. I have to control everything. If you have control issues, this is where it comes from. It's from having expectations on the world instead of trust. Now, can trust be violated? Yes. And sometimes you're going to trust and it's going to be wrong. And that is and that is perfectly fine because that is giving people the free will and the autonomy to do what they're going to choose to do. They are autonomous entities. Sometimes I talk about treating other people as their NPCs. It doesn't mean to be mean. It means that they're running their own code. It's not your code. You can't control it. Stop trying to. Stop. If you stop trying to control everything in your life, you'll be a much happier person. And that and the way to do that is to get rid of the expectations. Just stop having the expectations. Or when you do have them, notice them, realize how they're ridiculous, and then let them go. Let them go. You'll be so much happier. You'll live so much of a better life, I promise you. Replace the expectations with standards that you have for yourself. And instead of having expectations on people, trust. And if you can't trust a person, then don't be in a relationship with them. Don't get into an interaction with them. And you have various degrees of trust. You know that there's a percentage probability always that someone could cheat on you. It doesn't matter how good they are. It doesn't matter how good your relationship is. There's some probability. It might be astronomically small, but they're a human. They're, 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 their code is outside of your code. You can't control what they're doing. So there is a possibility that they could do that, just like there's a possibility that someone could poison your food in a restaurant. However, you operate with trust. And why do you operate with trust? Because you have known them, you have seen how they've acted before, and that gives you some confidence in that person. So let me know if you have any questions about this. There's a lot more I could talk about the subject because it does branch into a lot of different things. But the big concept here is to understand what an expectation is Understand why it's ridiculous to have expectations. And, and if you're having resistance to this idea, which a lot of people do, I want you to think of an expectation that is reasonable <laughs> because there isn't any. It is just as unreasonable to expect a human being that is not in your control, that is somewhat random, to behave in a way that you expect as it is to expect the weather to be the way that you want it to be. It's it's as ridiculous of an expectation. And so if you're holding on to things that are ridiculous, you, what's the result of that gonna be? Yeah, not all of your expectations will, will turn out to be wrong or, or to, you know, eventually they will, eventually everything changes or passes away. However, uh, what is gonna happen is that they, they are, some of them will, and then you're going to be devastated and you're going to be upset and you're going to have the victim mindset if, if you expect things to be a certain way about reality. The, the more you can let go and stop trying to control reality and, and let it be what it is, but have standards for yourself. You, instead, you focus on yourself, right? This is self-efficacy. The more you can practice that, the better off you'll be. Now, if you want some help with some of these things, there's a couple of resources I'll give you, okay? So first, I have a Bulldog Mindset membership. There's a link down below. I'm gonna be rebooting this probably in January and really adding to this and, and creating some more detailed lessons on all of these things because I think this is extremely valuable. And then the other thing that, that I have for you is it's not directly related, but if you want to support me in my work and if you're if you're interested in becoming financially free, I became financially free at 33 years old. I teach people how to do that. I have a, a program called The Well That Never Runs Dry. If you're really serious about this, DM me on Instagram, DM me the word freedom. Someone from my team will message you, okay, and, and, and get in, in touch with you. And then the final thing is if you want one-on-one -on -one coaching with me, it is, uh, I have limited slots on that. It is fairly expensive, just as a, as a forewarning. Uh, you can email me at john at bulldogmindset.com and we can, we can discuss it and see if you're a good fit. All right, I hope this has helped you. If it did, 
uh, you know, leave a, a, a like, a comment down below, and watch. I, I've got some playlists here. I've got a playlist of every single video that I'm doing on these daily videos. Um, it, yeah, I would encourage you to make it part of your daily ritual. You know, again, I'm not trying to toot my own horn, but I'm trying to give you value every single day. That that's something that's going to help you in your life. And, and if you find it valuable, if you found this video valuable, you know, please support my work, and uh, I'll see you tomorrow.